Good morning, professors. I'm so glad to be here to present our investigation on the buffum La Paz needle problem. So, first of all, what is it? Let's say the floor is paved by the floor is paved by the rectangular tiles with length A and B. Then we draw a needle of length L onto the floor. And the probability P that the intersection between the needle and the grid lines is given by this formula. So in this paper, we generalize the problem to not only needle but also arbitrary polygons and regular polygons. Moreover, we generalize the problem to n dimension. So in this presentation, I will mainly focus on finding one and finding two. So here's finding one. If a square is dropped randomly on the, the grid, after some calculations, the probability is given by this formula. Then, <clears throat> let the arbitrary shape be Q. When Q is dropped randomly onto the grid without loss of generality, let X, Y be the coordinates of the dropping point on the grid, where X, Y, and theta belong to these ranges. Then let phi rotator be the coordinates of vertices of Q rotator theta anticlockwise about the dropping point. And the phi rotator is equal to this set of items. And the joint dens probability density function are hence this formula. So Q does not intersect with the grid lines under these conditions. And hence, we can find the ranges of the integral. And moreover, the maximum value for theta is 2 pi over n. It's in order to avoid counting the same rotation twice. And now, here's lemma 2.3.2. For all n, we do not need to consider the whole range when calculating the probability. Instead, we only need to consider half of the range. It's because of symmetry. And if n is odd, we can even further reduce the range. So, we split into cases according to <coughs> the value of n module 4. So this is case 1, n congruent 0, mode 4. And by some calculation, we can obtain this result. And here is example 2.3.3, .3, where n is equal to 8. And after some calculation, we obtain this result, which we will get back to here later. And now this is case 2, where n congruent 1, mode 4. And this is case 3, where n congruent 2, mode 4. And now, this is example 2.3.4, where n is equal to 2. And by using a formula, we can get this result, which agrees with the formula given by Laplace. And this is case 4, n congruent 3 mode 4. So this is the end of finding 1. Now, let's get to finding 2. So, <clears throat> given an arbitrary polygon Q with n vertices, and we can convert it into its convex hole. Consider Q rotating clockwise about its geometric center. It can be seen as the regular grid lines being rotated anticlockwise clockwise about the centers of Q. And first, we need to find the equivalent rectangle of Q. It's defined as, this, as the smallest rectangle that bounds Q, which is sized parallel to the rotated grid lines, and where theta is lies in this range. And this is a demonstration. In order to find the equivalent rectangle of Q for a specific theta, we will find the vertices which are the maximum and minimum values in the rotated X and rotated Y direction. And then we can compare the slope of the two edges connecting the same vertices with the grid lines. And here is definition 3.1. We define the vertices and the edges in anticlockwise from 1 to N. So, <clears throat> then we let MI be the slope of the I third edge which we can refer to this. Then, for each edge in Q, we can calculate the angle from the x-axis theta i. And here is definition 3.2. X prime extremes are the vertices that touches the x prime grid line, with the maximum and minimum x coordinate respectively. Similarly, this can, re this can apply to the y case. And now, here is number 3.3. If the i vertex is x prime extremes, then theta li lies in this range. Similarly, if the i vertex is y prime extremes, then theta lies in this range. And the proof of lemma 3.3 is shown below, which you can refer to our paperwork. 
and now his definition 3.6. The critical angle x for the i vertex in Q, which is denoted by Cxi, is the angle when either one of x prime extremes changes from the i vertex to the i plus one vertex, and this can apply to the Cyi. So using number 3.3, we can obtain that Cxi is equal to theta i and Cyi is equal to theta i plus pi over two. And here is formula 3.7. When theta is in this range and x prime y prime extremes do not change, then the continuous sum of probabilities of log intersecting the grid lines is shown below. Therefore, the continuous sum of probabilities of log intersecting grid lines is this. So, first of all, we will check if Q is suitable for the algorithm. Then, we will go through the loop of theta from 0 to pi over 2. For each iteration of theta, the vertices do not change. And then we can find probability of number of intersections and add to the variable sum. And the probability is equal to 1 minus 2 times sum over at pi. So this. Okay, so now this is the time complexity. It is order n not n. And this is example 3.11. First, we apply the algorithm to n equals to a. Then the loop will execute three times. So eventually, we can obtain this result which also agrees with the result in finding 1. And now, I'll talk about finding 3. This is an example of a pentagon which is, an, which is a default polygon. And this figure 4.2 is a demonstration of a pentagon in fig, figure 4.1 with a vertices. And this figure 4.3, a demonstration of pentagon in figure 4.1 with the coordinates of vertices. And this number 4.2, which you can refer to our paperwork. And this another demonstration. And the proof of number 4.2 is shown below. And hence, the rotation of a rectangle of with W height H and with this vertices, rotating about the X, Y, Z, Ss by less than pi over two, pi over two, and pi over two, any clockwise or clockwise respectively, does not change <clears throat> the vertices carrying the effect of x, y, z, extreme values. Also, the rotation of an n-sided regular polygon with default position and orientation lying on the x set <clears throat> playing about the x, y, z, x by less than power 2, 2 power n, and power 2 n clockwise or clockwise respectively does not change the vertices carrying the effect of x, y, z extremes. And as time is running so I don't think we have enough time to explain all of this. So let's jump to the conclusion. So we use similar method to obtain the final result. And the probability that the prism intersects with one or more grid planes is given below, which is a one minus a triple integral. Thank you very much.